Hello and welcome to this video on performing a hypothesis test on the population mean when the population variance is unknown. The example we'll use for this video is the same example that we used for the video on performing a hypothesis test on the population mean when the variance is known, except in this case we'll assume we don't know the variance. The idea is we have an injection molding machine and we want to determine whether the machine is accurately injecting the amount of plastic it should. And we'll do this by weighing 15 different objects produced by the machine and using these weights to perform a hypothesis test. So our hypothesis in this case will be H0 is that the population mean is 0 0.23 kilograms and this would be the proper weight H1 where the population mean is not equal to 0 0.23 kilograms. We'll assume for this example that we have 15 objects that we're weighing, so our n is 15, and again in this case we'll assume that we don't know the population variance. So this is the process that we'll use to perform the hypothesis test. It's very similar to the process used to perform the hypothesis test when the mean is known. The first thing to do is define our hypothesis 0 and our hypothesis 1. We've already done that. The next thing to do is to compute the sample average and the sample standard deviation from the data. So here's our spreadsheet. We have the weights of the 15 items that we've measured. We have the population mean that we're testing against. We have the number of data points. So the first thing to do is compute the average of our data values. We do this as follows. Next, we compute the sample standard deviation as follows. So that gives us our sample standard deviation. The next step is to compute our test statistic T0, and we do this as follows. T0 is the sample mean minus the value that we're using in our hypotheses, divided by the sample standard deviation, which in turn is divided by the square root of n. So we compute T0 as the sample mean minus our assumed value from u divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And we get this value for T0. So the p-value here is twice the probability that the random variable which represents our, our sample statistic, and you'll notice I have this n minus 1 here, that's the number of degrees of freedom in this random variable, where n is the number of observations we have. So again, we're after the probability that the random variable that represents the test statistic is greater than the absolute value of the statistic that we computed. So now we can go to our spreadsheet and compute this. We compute the p-value with the spreadsheet as follows. It's equal to t-dist of the absolute value of t0, comma, n minus 1, where n is the number of samples, and so n minus 1 is our number of degrees of freedom, and mode 2. This mode 2 says that we're doing a two-tailed test. So with this mode 2 here, we don't need to multiply the t-dist value by 2 because it's taken into account by the fact that we're telling it to do a two-tailed test. So when we compute this, we get the following p-value, 0 0.0217, etc. The other approach to this problem is finding the value of t-alpha over 2 comma n minus 1 for a given value of alpha. And this t-alpha over 2 comma n minus 1 is basically the value that solves this equation. T alpha 2 comma n minus 1 is the value for which the probability of the random variable being greater than this value is equal to alpha over 2. So we can go to the spreadsheet and find this. So now with the spreadsheet we can use the formula equals T i n v for inverse T distribution and our number is alpha, and our degrees of freedom is the number of samples minus 1. And that gives us a 2.97, etc. So now we can ask the question, do we accept or reject the null hypothesis based on these values? 
Oftentimes, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we will reject the null hypothesis, so we might do that in this case. On the other hand, with a fixed significance level of alpha equals 0 0.01, our t alpha over 2 comma n minus 1 is 2.97, etc., which is larger than the absolute value of t0. So because our threshold is larger than the absolute value of t0, at this confidence level, we would not reject the null hypothesis. So in this video, we've illustrated a couple things. We've illustrated how to compute t0, which again is a function of the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. We've illustrated how to compute a p-value for this t0 and use that to determine whether or not to reject the null hypothesis at a given significance level. We've shown how to compute the value of t alpha over 2 that you would use to determine whether or not to reject or accept H0 for a given alpha. So that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful.